What's up, gamers? Uh, Barnes here. Um, today we got a uh, PC profile. Um, I'm joined by Mr. Michael Panky, uh, who uh, who plays um, Galaxus Brennan, um, which is his mage name in the game. But we'll get into that aspect of his character. Um, so let's let's start with uh, your uh, birth name, I guess. Oh, that uh, his name is Elder Fearmark. Elder Fumark. Now let's go into uh, the story about uh, Elder, Elder Fumark. What do we know about him? Well, uh, he's, uh, he's a fairly young guy. Uh, he is a genius intelligence. He's spent uh, all of his life that he can remember living amongst a guild of evil wizards. He is himself a pretty dark and sinister man. He loves destruction and flame. Now, why why does he love destruction and flame? Well, as a young child, when he was uh, abducted to be brought amongst the wizards, uh, they burnt down his family home, and so describe he, that scene a little bit if you can remember. Uh, well, you said that uh, I was uh, outside playing, and I saw a cat, which I assume is probably the familiar of uh, my current wizard master. I no, your familiar current master doesn't have a. Oh, well, there was some cat, yeah, and I was playing with the cat. My mom was playing music in the parlor, and then uh, just as the wizards were showing up, she went and hid your sister. Right? Yeah, and she teleported away with someone. Um, and then you uh, met Drorgog. Yeah, and uh, he's a badass. Drogog has been your master ever since. Uh, your character... Uh, he loves battle. <clears throat> what was his, his birth name again? His birth name? Mine? Yeah. Elder Fearmark. Elder Fearmark, yeah. He met uh, Drogog, and uh, he became a member of uh, the Coven of Ubel, um, an order of male wizards um, that worship the... Uh, goddess to some extent um, it's a requirement but the level of your devotion can be questionable to say the least um, and uh, you became a member of the school <clears throat> now uh, let's talk about some uh, some of your character concept well uh, I have the idea in my mind of this guy as being uh, kind of a loner to a certain extent uh, you know he keeps to himself for the most part he's uh, not very good with people uh, which is not really his own fault uh, for the most part he's a company man he wants to do well for the coven he wants to uh, make himself useful you know he wants to uh, make connections and and be the best that he can be for the company. You know, he's kind of like a company man. He uh, he has kind of like a military mindset about the whole thing, uh, partially because he's specializes in flame and destruction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, for the most part, he wants to portray himself as being, you know, like straight laced and with the philosophy of the group. Mm -hmm. At the same time, though. Uh, his character, you know, he has like a, a little bit of a conflict in his mind. Uh, he's not really with the fashions of the wizards. He believes that... Fashions, you mean? No, the fashions, I said. Oh, fashions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he thinks that wizards are like, you know, superior beings and like the most elite beings there are. They share that. However, uh, at the same time, they have this uh, whole like detachment from worldly human living. Uh, that he doesn't really dig. He views it as like uh, arrogant and pretentious, and he finds himself at odds with a lot of people in the organization because of that. He views like their involvement with the religious structure as being like uh, uh, pageantry, really, for the most part. Because okay. you know, ultimate, ultimately, the the goal of the organization is so that everyone can be self-serving. Yeah. You know? to the highest degree cool. and uh so yeah he's kind of he's kind of on the down low about a lot of things uh 
He likes to party. Wizards mm -hmm. don't really do that. Uh, he likes uh, women. That's not really allowed. Uh, Attachments to material things, yes. Yeah. He, uh... He likes weapons, which uh, wizards, wizards kind of frown upon. He uh, he likes music, and that's kind of a big deal, because that's one of his only memories from his life before he was a wizard. Of his mother. Yeah. Now, um, one of the key factors in the world is uh, within the school, um, prior to this time, it was probably about 60 years prior to when we start gameplay, um, the wizards had orchestrated this great war, um, and this war involved um, it was against the dragons, which were a major, which are a major faction in the world, and uh, spellcasters. Now, <clears throat> this included all spellcasters uh, that couldn't really prove where they got their powers from, um, with the exception of clerics in the area. So uh, the wizards along with the church orchestrated this war and factions of uh, sorcerers, bards, witches, um, warlocks band together to oppose uh, the uh, Wu Jen and the war mages and uh, the wizards. Um, anyone who prepared spells was, was in the same lot with the wizards and they basically had a war against this against the spontaneous casters who were getting their power sources from different places that was hard for them to explain. However, this also included the druids. The druids were also included in this war um, by the cleric's request, mostly. Um, so, bards, sorcerers, um, warlocks, um, witches are the same faction in this particular culture. Um, and they are called the uh, oh, Fange F A N G. Um, what was their name? <laughs> Fang, there are new factions in it. The world. You made them up, so I imagine you would be the one that would. Make yeah, them. I would speculate that if I didn't know the truth. It's like the Fang fugitive or something. <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that in another video. Um, so. If your mother was a bard, she would have been um, illegal. Public enemy number one. Yeah. Um, so in a sense, like, uh, music is at very least looked at with suspicion um, in this school that he is a part of. So even like you having like an affinity for music or or an appreciation could be consent. bad politically. Yeah. Well, this kind of ties in with my uh, character's uh, selfishness, and uh, he uh, he would kind of view any effort of the organization to limit his personal freedom as impractical. Because in his mind, they are pretty much on top of the world, so they should be able to do whatever they want. And yeah. himself specifically. He should be able to do whatever he wants. And he doesn't see... Within the system that exists, right? You're not saying that you should have access to things that you don't deserve necessarily. Oh, no. That you and can't credit And my for. character like plans to <clears throat> work his way up in the organization, at least in this point in the story. But he, uh, Word. he doesn't Personal. feel he doesn't feel that his uh, his activities outside of his duties to the school and his learning <clears throat> uh, should be anybody's concern. And I think that from what you've told me, his uh, master pretty much takes a hands off approach and feels the same way. All right, his master. Now his master is the Drogog. Uh, Drogog. Um, <clears throat> he is. Played by Brian Brest, Brest, um, the actor, and uh, he uh, <laughs> he has a funny haircut with big poofy things and some tattoos, which are also slightly suspicious in the school. Um, he's an adrenaline junkie, and um, 
he's an evoker and uh, he likes spicy foods um, he'll try anything once um, he loves to free fall that's one of his favorite things to do um, fly really high and then free fall cast by the fall at the last moment um, Jorgog is a uh, he knows he knows no fear. He he's a thrill seeker, and uh, <clears throat> he's the arcane advisor to the uh, Holy Knocked Thirteenth Army, um, led by uh, Destain Stratum, the uh, Knight of the Lost Passion, Grand Grand Master, um, Knight of the Lost Passion, a uh, woman of few words and many tactics she has little use for um, the arcane advisors uh, she feels that they baffle her plans like in a few words like she'll plan for months organize millions of or not millions but thousands of troops and then the advisor will come along and with inside of two minutes all that planning is gone. So she has little use for the Arcane Advisor. Uh, she's not much of a believer. Um, anyway, that that is their assignment um, from the Coven. Along with your classes and regular duties. <clears throat> uh, what else can I talk about? Um, well, yeah. I suppose it would make sense to get... Uh, oh, well... An interesting thing that happened uh, in the second session. We've only played two sessions now. Mm -hmm. Not three. Of, oh, yeah, three sessions, sure. Of what is likely to be hundreds, hopefully. But yeah, like, uh, my character is on a boat. Alright, so he took an assignment from uh, this um, Order of Ebon Knights, um, a sect of Ebon Knights. Uh, called the uh, not this prosecute um, or not this prosecute prosecute ritters which is just German for knights um, or just not this prosecute and the not this prosecute is a uh, order of holy knights who um, believe in like pre-scripture or lost scripture of their religion um, a of tales of a time before the plane was as it is today, before it was a living plane. Um, <clears throat> and they're in, uh, they're in search of uh, knowledge from this time. And so uh, you get, you basically get uh, assigned to them. And you get on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm not really sure what our mission is. No. I know that it's out in, like, giant lands. Yeah. But anyway, now that he's on the boat and can do whatever he feels like, you know, because the nautical life is all about democracy and freedom of choice. Sure. He's a, they uh, <clears throat> commissioned a uh, boat from a uh, local gang. Um, the gang's name is uh, the very... Uh, very Kaluva, the very Kaluva gang, who is a uh, member of the Grey Pouch. Grey Pouch is the lar larger criminal organization that they belong to. Um, they pretty much are runners. They do some pirating, um, but they run illicit goods, and they have smaller ships. They sneak people past borders, um, stuff like that, smuggling. So uh, yeah, my character doesn't know too much about that. So the knights had arranged for uh, this this boat for them to get onto. Yeah, and uh, we made a stop. So I had them. Uh, I sent somebody to go and pick me up a loot. And I started playing. It's kind of like a personal affirmation of uh, freedom. I tend to like take ranks and perform as time goes on. My character is not charismatic, so it's going to be slow going. You know, but eventually, he wants to be a, a virtuous loot player. Here's the mini. That could bring in some interesting conflict. Might have to get a uh, loot then. This was the mini originally. Uh, I already did. 
Oh, you can't see shit on that. He loves I? fire, yeah. So I figured that one was a good one. Can't see shit on that. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, he's also not gonna liking to that. So, um, all right. So let's go into uh, some of the uh, mechanical and other aspects of your character. He also uses the. I didn't know we were doing. They were doing that. Why wouldn't we do that? Okay. He also uses the uh, orange dice. Now, I'm, I, you've always used the orange dice, correct? Yeah, this is like the fourth character I've played with those dice. But they just happen to be the colors of fire. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's let's go with the stats here. Oh, start from the top here. We're going deep, huh? Take it from Talking the top. numbers. Let's start from here. Ah, uh, yeah. Galactus Brennan. He's a neutral yeah. evil wizard. That's his wizard name. He's played by Panky. That's me. All I'm, right. I'm Panky. He's a first level wizard. Yeah, that's true. He's an evoker. His daddy is Malum, kind of by necessity. Deity of Malum, yeah. Yeah. Female yeah. goddess. He's a neutral human, evil, right? Human male. Yeah, neutral evil. Yeah, just mm -hmm. just plain evil. All right. Nothing fancy. Mm -hmm. He loves destruction, but he's not crazy. Okay. Uh. He's 24 years old, 6'1", 195 pounds. Big guy. He's a redhead with dark eyes. And he's got like uh, a lot of uh, like fancy brands, kind of like tattoos, but they're brands. All right. The Jewel Scarification of Souls. Speak up. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, what, what, what now? Speak up. What am I speaking up about? So they can hear you. All right, so let's get stats now. We're going stats and everything. Yeah, we're going stats. He's got an 11 strength. All right. He's got a 17 dexterity. Okay. He's got a constitution of 13. All right. An intelligence of 20, which is a big thing. You put your highest stat in there. Yeah. Pathfinder. Humans in Pathfinder. Plus two. Yeah. Man. Hardcore. All right. Wis Wisdom 15 and Charisma 8. Charisma 8, alright. Which is the limp of the character. Hey, everyone's gonna at least have one. Um, alright, so let's go into... Uh, I don't think it's bad, but it's strange for role play. Let's Somebody go in, who's really smart and awful with you. Let's go into your skill selection. What are some of the skills you chose? Skills that I chose. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to go in for a bunch of knowledge skills. Off the bat, I did uh, Arcana. Plains, religion. Uh, eventually, I'm going to take those perform ranks, like I was saying, and maybe learn different things, like acting and comedy. Hmm. Uh, You're looking to get fried by a member of the council. Anyway, go on. You know, spice spice up the story a little bit. I don't, I, that's cool, though. You know, spellcraft, that's always big. Put points in craft alchemy. Cool. As an interest. All right. Yeah. Um. Look. My character is not very intimidating. Let's go into uh. I'm very diplomatic. Yeah. You don't discuss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Let's go into um. Feats. Or traits or flaws. Whatever you want to do first. Uh, well, yeah. I went with like uh, a lot of. Uh. I did a lot of trade-ins with this character. Uh, I trade my familiar for fire affinity, as per uh, Unearthed Arcana or Complete Mage, one of those books. I have it written down somewhere. Let's see. Yeah. That's from Unearthed Arcana. That's energy affinity. You know, fire character, energy affinity. Pretty good idea. Uh, I also took the focused specialist variant. Which is, uh, you get some extra uh, school spells, but you take uh, an extra opposition school. That's, All right, so took from, it uh, What is your opposition school? That's from Complete Mage. Well, I uh, I did the focus spe uh, specialization with Evocation. I banned uh, Enchantment, Illusion, and Conjuration. 
Not banned, but... Well, yeah, took them as opposition schools. So right. Opposition schools now, you're not banned. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, then, you know, they have all these, like, fancy new options for wizards when you're a wizard in Pathfinder. I took the admixture school. So I can change uh, a whole bunch of my evocation spells, the energy type, which is mm -hmm. kind of obvious. My character would change them in fire. He's good at casting those kind of spells. Right. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. Yeah. I guess that's, uh, I took Meta Magic School Focus. That's a cool feat. Uh, it allows you to subtract the extra levels from, uh, Meta Magic spells when you prepare them. It's pretty cool. Sculpt Spell, which is a really nice, cheap Meta Magic feat that allows you to reshape your, or, well, reshape your spells. And I've already used that. In both sessions, and uh, I took a lacrimatist cogitation, which is, uh, if you're a wizard, great, is a no brainer. It's no brainer. Uh, you get to leave a. I showed the party that. You, you get to leave first a, time I played a wizard. You get to leave a slot open, yeah. and put any wizard spell you want in there. And I, my character has like multiple spell books and knows many many spells. So, so or has he has access to to the school. Yeah. Um, now, how many flaws did you take? Uh, well, initially I was thinking I was going to take, like, a couple, because extra feats are always cool. But how many did you take? Instead, I only took one, which is slow. Oh, that's right, your character's really slow. Yeah, my base land speed is 15. Alright, so, uh... Which is kind of funny for a guy... It is. ...who enjoys blowing things up in fire. You know, the guy that lights the fireworks off and doesn't run away. The kind um, of guy. Let's talk about uh, your traits. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You gave me this one called Spell Touched, which I thought was kind of a weird trait. You know, trait. Uh, I have like a plus one caster level for evocation, which is cool. Obviously, I wasn't going to argue with that. But then you gave me a uh, minus one caster level for abjuration, which at first level is kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> But whatever. That's no big deal. Alright, um, what else have we got? Uh, special abilities. Yeah, we pretty much covered that. Alright, you covered those. Alright, um, languages. Yeah, I speak a bunch of them. What, what do you speak? Uh, well, I speak the two languages that are, like, Campaign languages, the language of the people. I just spit them out. The right? tongue and lick tongue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I speak Draconic. Ignan, Infernal, and Abyssal. All right, Those cool. Those are all good to know. Um, I'm an evil wizard. I see you use a crossbow fire. proficiency here. Just okay. mention that. Oh, yeah. Uh, we use the weapon group feat variant, so I had a choice of basic weapons and crossbows. I chose crossbows because I figure... This guy probably doesn't want to stand near the people that he fights. He intends to, you know, live forever, kind of uh, transcend mortalities eventually. So he's not going to be running up on people and getting himself killed. All right, so let's talk about... He uh, likes his crossbow. In the last session, he wasn't allowed to cast any spells because they're on a secret mission and he could be detected. So he used his crossbow a lot. He was actually doing a pretty good job. Let's talk about your forbidden knowledge. Some good rules. You have three ranks in forbidden knowledge. So what are the things like you know? You know the planet's flat, right? Yeah. It's not round like everyone thinks. Like where everyone thinks. Um, what else do you know? I know that the plane is alive. You know the plane's alive. What else? There's one more thing. You have three. You know, it's this child's design. I think so. I know something about. I know. You tell me. Where's your. Uh, where is yours? Where's, where's the stupid <laughs> list of uh, traits and stuff? Alright, so on uh, 
Hammered's um, <clears throat> suggestion, I used the uh, high action role playing system, um, kind of like an alignment system to determine who uh, the characters are. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, I'll slap you. <laughs> basically, the system um, uses a scale of 10, and there's two extremes on either side of it, and you decide how many points to put into one of I each. think that that is a really cool idea. Yeah, it was a good idea, Hammered. Um, so, uh, let's go over you what you chose. Oh, yeah. These are starting. Uh, well, Barney said that uh, we wanted to keep the numbers towards the middle at the beginning, which makes sense. You know, they'll, gra they'll gravitate the more role-playing that we do, which right. makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not like I refer to it while I'm role-playing, but just having filled it out uh -huh. made me think about all this stuff, which is good. Right. And some people might need to use it as a focus. Yeah, it's worth checking out. High action role playing. I kind of uh, I, I kind of think that at times, you know, you, you obviously it's not designed to be like a rigid thing. Mhm. Mm but, you know, you should once you have this stuff in mind, you should try to be consistent about the way that you role play your character. Mhm. Mm I think that you can't just play out a character when you want to do things. But anyway, uh I decided that my character was going to lean towards the lustful side. He's more energetic than he is lazy. All right, lustful over chest, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's all right, more energetic than lazy. Yeah. He's uh, he's kind of vengeful. Over forgiving. He's, he's selfish. He's uh, generous. He's honest. He's evil, but he's honest. Cause he's not good at lying. He's more honest than deceitful. Yeah, yeah. Same both. I said that he's uh just over arbitrary, and you know he's not a lawful alignment, but at the same time he. Is uh, you know, he works for an institution. He's in school. He can't just uh, go casting about violently. Uh, he's cruel. I would say he's kind of a cruel guy. He loves destruction and flame. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a whole lot of regard for life. Uh, I don't think that he is a particularly proud or modest guy. He knows his place. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh. He's a worldly guy. He's not religious at all. He thinks that's all kind of a big joke. Even though he knows that it's true. He doesn't care. Mm -hmm. thinks he it, thinks it's silly. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's temperate, you know, but not particularly. He's, he's a, a suspicious character, you know. He works in, like, the evil Illuminati, so he's pretty much got to be suspicious and uh he's not particularly valorous or cowardly that'll that'll prove itself in time mm -hmm. i don't think that he's done anything yet to lead him particularly in either of those directions all right um he did decide to single-handedly sack a village on his own so i guess he's not cowardly no he did sack a barbarian village which belonged to one of the other pcs but he didn't Shh. know that oh yeah it could be a spoiler dan um, anything else you would like to say about... Well, uh, Dan actually definitely does. Anything else you would like to say about uh, Elder Fuhrmark, um, a.k.a. Galaxis Brennan, um, evoker of the Covenant of Ubel, um, minor advisor to the Holy Knox 13th Army, um, currently on a mission for um, the Nathus Prosecute Knights, Don't get in our way. Uh, that's that would be my advice. That's your advice to to right. the NPCs. Do you foresee any efforts on the high seas? Of any health? any problems with any of the PCs? Do I foresee problems with any of the PCs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, as a team player, I'm gonna do my best to avoid that. Uh we just had some player fallout in the campaign. Yeah, so but that was not our one problem. of the big. One of the big uh, character uh, clashes that was kind of destined by lost rules right. in the world, that kind of is just on hold. Uh, obviously, because I destroyed Dan's character's village, uh, Gran Granaclist? Granaclist, yeah. Yeah, I kind of destroyed Granaclist's village with like one fell, cruel stroke. Which kind of got him uh, excommunicated. Yeah. 
Oh. Well, my character had no way of knowing that that was going to happen. Sure. But anyway, Dan's character at this point is has the inkling of a suspicion that my character might have done that. Yeah. Anything else? No, I'm done. I'm done. Sorry that went so long, but uh, thanks for listening. He's not listening. sorry. I'm not. Um, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you guys soon.